The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff. You may now be seated. Honorable members, welcome to this session of the NTV People's Parliament, seated here in Kamuli District in Eastern Uganda. Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of the People's Parliament, presides. We express our gratitude to the local government of leadership of Kamuli District and the Kamuli Broadcasting Services for partnering with us. Madam Speaker, Uganda's population is burgeoning fast, exerting stress on the already dwindling natural resources and increasing government expenditure on social services. The biggest percentage of this population lives in rural Uganda and in Kamuli especially is crucial because in some villages the ratio the ratio of mother to child is 1 to 10. It's, it's come to our attention that women have limited or no, or no say on how many children they can have. It's against this background, therefore, that I, that I suggest we discuss the topic of assessing the role of women in family planning. Those in favor, aye to the contrary, no? Aye. Eyes have it. You are welcome on NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kamuli district in the region of Usoga and we are discussing a very crucial issue of assessing the role of women in family planning. According to the 2011 Uganda Demographic and Health Survey, female fertility is highest in eastern Uganda and most especially in Kamuli here. We are assessing the role of women in deciding how many children they can have. And uh, present here we have the chairperson of the Kamuli district. She calls herself the chairman of Kamuli district, uh, Madam Salam Musumba. Could you please, as the head of this district, give us an overview of uh, the assess, uh, you can assess for us the, uh, the role of women in family planning in this district. Yes, can you have the podium, uh, Madam Chairman? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, <coughs> Honorable House, Welcome to Kamuli, the land of the Pachabazinga. Fertility stands at 8.9. We, the women of Chabazinga, are very fertile. And we continue to offer that service to this country and to the world. Of populating the country. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. <laughs> However, we are now very concerned that the resources of this land, the Chabazinga's land, are not expanding, and therefore we must take up the services of family planning. Family planning in Kamuli has been given to the women. The, 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 the family planning services available today are more to the women. We have injectables, we have oral contraception, we have implants, we have the natural method, which is very difficult for a place like Kamuli because of the fertility of the women. We also have uh, culture. Culture is the biggest family planning intervention that we must access. We are glad that we now have our traditional institutions re-established. The Chabazinga ship is doing very well. The gabla ship is doing very well. We are hoping that the men will now take up their rightful place in family planning. The limited access of men to family planning is condoms. And a normal Soga man doesn't like to use a condom because it is not part of the natural process of, uh, of expression of intimacy. And therefore, they would want 
the comfort of, of culture, the comfort of the Chabazinga, the comfort of manhood to be able to downsize their families. They are ready to have a vexotomy. I can't pronounce that word properly, Madam Speaker. Vasectomy. I have been advised, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable House. Vasectomy is the only cure to the high fertility rate because polygamy too is a factor, a reality in the community of Kamuli and in the community of Busoga. Madam Speaker, the range of services that the people of Kamuli will need have to be intensive. They have to be acceptable. They have to be male-led for us to achieve maximum benefit from the services of access, improved access, improved uptake of family planning. It will be a great, great service to the people of Uganda, to the people of the world, to help the people of Kamuli, the men of Kamuli, to manage their families, to downsize their families by half. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Can women decide the number of children that they can have in the family? Can they have a woman to tell us? Yes, Madam. Uh, women would also love uh, to take responsibility of deciding how many children to have in their families. But the problem still lies on the men. A woman may decide to have five. A man says, no, I want seven or eight. <laughs> Somebody is saying ten. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. So it would be difficult for a woman to decide because already you may have your decision, but as the owner of the home, uh, you cannot contradict with him because he also has his decision. Yes, Honorable Member, holding the podium. Why are you not giving opportunity for women to decide the number of children to have in the family? Chair? Since we have gender balance, the opportunity is there. But uh, my problem is people are not aware of what is going on with family planning. The government has not taken its initiative to educate the Wanainch to take a precaution of depopulating the country or the district. Those people who are seriously doing this work, mainly the church, the church has tried to educate, especially the Church of Uganda. So, if people are informed, they will do the needful. Especially on men. If it's not on me, just as I did it in 1990, the speed was controlled, and I managed my family properly. How many children do you have, Honorable Member? Very few. How many? <laughs> <laughs> there are six. Thank you. And they're all graduates. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you for being responsible. So, you are a district leader. You are a councillor in the Kamuli district, Honorable Member. What have you done to, to ensure that the people of Kamuli are aware about contraceptives? Most especially men. Are they aware of the vasectomy? Please, take on the podium and tell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. First of all, in the, in the history of this, this world, the first person to have tried a family planning method was a man. You find the Bible in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 38, that man was called Onan. For him, he didn't want to impregnate his brother's wife. <laughs> so, he applied the method commonly these days called withdraw. There's Are the been... men of Kamuli emulating him? Exactly. Mm -hmm. In a place called... In... <laughs> Family planning involves deciding consciously when to have children and how many. But the family planning or lack of it affects directly the health of women. A woman must produce 
not beginning too early, not, not too frequently every year a child, and also not produce when she's too old. But men, some men who have lost the leadership in that category, in family planning matters, have to be told that, please, you have a role to play here. Who and has who to do that? Who is going to tell them? Who is going the to woman. But this woman must be empowered to do that. How is she supposed to be empowered? Through education, through economic empowerment, and availability of information, and right information. So as leaders, I feel it's, my duty, it's our duty, and personally my duty, to provide the women with the opportunity of empowerment. Can, yes, you are working with family planning organization. Come and give us some information. How women are responding? I'm Honorary Wanda Msavi Margaret. I'm a health worker in the Kamali district. Women in the Kamali district try to respond to family planning, but the problem comes on the side of men. You see, men and are the problem in Kamali. And where the problem comes in is here. A woman comes that I have now three children. I would love to choose a family planning method. But the problem with my husband is my, hub, my husband does not allow me to choose any family planning method because I have not yet given birth to a male child. I only have females. There, they remain pulling ropes. And indeed, this lady may come in you see that she's really in need because she gives birth every year, every year. Being a health worker, you would love to advise her and give her a chance to choose a family planning method because giving children every year, you see that she's, she's wearing out. So coming for family planning does not mean that she does not want to do what? to produce or rather to deliver. But she wants at least her body to have a rest. We have earlier started uh, a blame game, men, women. But what is true is that knowledge is insufficient. We have very limited knowledge about family planning because one, it is the very women who decry the complications, the aftermath of consumption of these devices of uh, uh, family planning. Many of them are cancerous. Chairperson talked about implants. Those implants have caused um, unreasonable weight gain, unreasonable weight loss. Which men don't like. I may, <laughs> but no woman, no woman looks beautiful with the crippled hair or brown hair, which has caused, I mean, which has been caused by a consumption of a family planning. And no man wants a very fat woman. Exactly. If you chose a thin one and she's very fat and reasonable, then it goes against your interest. Mm. However, <laughs> yes, and, and that is not the role of the man. Mm. It is neither a role of a woman. We just find ourselves that the devices we're using are taking us that way. Another thing, a sector may farm to understand is something that is irreversible. So if we go for vasectomy and you have one child, what will you do if you needed a second one? If the worst came to the worst and you lost that one, will you go and get something else? Yes, or never the chairman of the district takes this podium. Which information are you giving the house, madam chairman? I am giving information to the honorable member holding the floor. Uh, the people of Kamuli, the men of Kamuli have chosen another definition of spacing. When you have a child in Kamuli, you have another one in, no, another one in Buwenge. That is called spacing. <laughs> and after Buwenge, then you have another one in Mukono. That is what they call spacing. Oh. Having it in geographical areas of that space. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for Madam. that information. <laughs> so, is that the case that when a woman says, you would uh, like to have two children, then you want to have other two children in another district. Madam Speaker, from Chairperson's point, she yeah. has that information. But mine is a little technical uh, that yeah. those things are affecting us. If a sector may, you can never reverse. And therefore, many people fear it. Talk about those condoms we are talking about today. You are aware that they are not 100% uh, perfect. We have always had problems with them. You put on a trouser, but at the end of the journey, you have a skirt. 
And therefore, even if you had it, even if it was available and you used it, it can tear, it can slip off, and you end up not uh, spacing the children as intended. You know these things. It's good I'm talking to mature people. But there are also people I am reliably informed about whose wives have insisted on producing many children because the point they stop, this man is going to marry another. Let me continue after all. I have nothing to do. When I stop producing children, my husband is going to go for another fertile woman. And therefore they have insisted on Thank producing. You. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we shall continue to debate about the same matter. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Busoga, this, in Busoga region district of Kamuli debating a very crucial issue of family planning, the role of women in accessing the family planning methods. You as the district health office, mm -hmm. what have you done? Because people are fearing the, the family planning, others make, are you giving them enough information? Honorable member. Yeah, thank you very much. House, thank please. you very much for that introduction. But are you giving the population information on how to use these methods, the implications of these methods, which one to choose? Yeah, I truly believe we are giving enough information to these, to these women. We are giving enough information to the women in the community, on radio, and even in the health facilities as they come to receive the, the services. However, like I said in the beginning, the success of the method will depend on the, on the support of the partner. So what because do you think as a health worker with the information you have interacted with the community? Are the men supporting their wives? The truth is the men are not supporting their wives. The men are not supporting their wives. And the reason could be that the men actually don't, don't, don't escort their women for, for the services. And so as we give the services, the men are not there because most of the time they are complaining they are too busy. And so as we give the house education talk, house education talks somehow is only focusing on the women and the men are left behind. And yet we would have loved this information to be shared together with uh, the, the two people who are receiving the, the method. So much money has been pushed into other sectors in, 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 in health by government. But one sector which remains... Um, out is the sector of uh, family planning. Because uh, I'm told with UPE, use, people say now things are much easier. I want to beg this honorable parliament um, through you, uh, Madam Speaker. Let's look at also the issue of uh, legalization of abortion at an appropriate time. Most young people, especially the girls, they are dropping out of school because they have reached uh, a point where they cannot help themselves. But in the developing world, look at Cuba, look at other countries. They have not only made abortion available, but it's free. So that when you cross the line, you still have a point of return. Other than saying that whoever somebody conceives has to give birth to a baby. And the father is not taking responsibility. It makes the same story on and on and on. Thank you. So, you're welcome, madam. Yes, honorable member. I honorable thank you, speaker. madam speaker. One factor we should take into consideration, Madam Speaker, is that naturally a man can produce five children in one night from five different sources. <laughs> the women don't have that option. Therefore, any logical family planning method should target the women as a priority. Why doesn't it target the women who can, the men who can have five in one night? Be because you know it, it is easier to deal with the, where the problem can be created than the the creator of the problem. <laughs> be, 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 because, be, because while you can there's have... Order, there is order, yes. Madam Speaker, is yes. it in order for the Honorable Member holding the floor to insinuate that uh, a man has no responsibility whatsoever except being a predator? Is he in order? <laughs> uh, I think... The Honourable Member has stated that a man can, give, can have five children in one night and yet a woman can have only one in one year. I'm sure we can, let's focus on the, women, on the men who can really generate very many at a go my, my, than focusing on, on women who can have one in a year. If, if Is I, it Honourable Member? If I, if, if I can emphasize my point, yes. you can control 10 men, you can control 20 men and two men go and cause havoc. So, it's good we talk to the men, 
But if we emphasize the women, we shall have results. But I don't want to create the impression that nothing is being done in Busoga here. The situation would be worse if it was not for the intervention of the multisectoral road development program of Busoga Diocese, which started the family life planning, family life education programs way back in 1977. Mm -hmm. And that program has been going on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Government only followed. So we are on track. Yes. The situation could be worse, but we shall get better. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable yes, Speaker. Yes, love the podium, uh, Honorable Member. Honorable Madam Zug Joffre is my name representing our people of Wiende mm. in Kamali. Actually, the men are not involved at all. For example, when you look at women, 65% of the women of, of Kamali are poor. They are illiterate. Even, even when the government tries to put the services of education, people are illiterate. People can't read. People don't have money. Some services are expensive. For example, I can give the injection method. Yes, Honorable Member. What yes. is your information? My information to my brother, Honorable Damzungu, is that we shouldn't emphasize the idea of illiteracy. There are methods which do not need education. My brother talked about withdrawal, which in science is called coitus interruptus. That one, he said that a woman has little to do. You both agree we are going to withdraw at a crucial time. But nobody, <laughs> Madam Speaker, nobody of the two is perfectly able to time when to do that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we would look at that because you have agreed there is even no problem, no conflict, but the mistiming can cause problems. Yeah. So we must involve everybody, the men and women. When you talk about use of condoms, we only emphasize the use of condoms for men. For men. So we leave out the women. So I would also beg that uh, if the women also took it up, when you talk about pills, because of poverty, men who are interested in impregnating others, even if a woman would like to use the pills, they are expensive and they cannot. Are they also, sell a family planning method? On? Yes, you sell them and, and they free of charge. Come and tell us. The family planning methods in government facilities are free. Madam mm -hmm. Speaker. Therefore, they are not supposed to be sold. Madam Speaker. Do you people buy contraceptives? May, may I have a woman? Who has, has any woman bought contraceptives? Thank you, Madam Speaker. When we go to the dispensaries and clinics, we buy them. And a packet, they sell it at 500 shillings. But in government facilities, uh, we avail them free of charge. Thank you. Okay. And then you asked about the different types of family planning methods for, for men. For men, yeah. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are about, I think they are about two family planning methods for men. That is the condom. And then the permanent method, which is vasectomy. vasectomy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that information. Honorable Speaker, I represent the youth of Buyele and Busoga at large. Uh, the, tubs are, the, tub, the pills I'm talking about are those accidental ones. They call them uh, uh, emergency pills. Eh? Injector. Honorable Kizige is, is informed about this. It, it costs 10,000. So you find that most of the youth that I represent can't afford this. Yet there are men who fall in love with these young, young girls and they are not willing, they are very mean that they cannot even offer that money for that. I also talk about another method of uh, self-period methods. It has also caused issues. There are women, most women also don't know which safe days. So you find a woman telling a, a gentleman how safe she is. But in actual sense, She's not, she's not educated. Or if, if she is, then she's still illiterate. There's another method of, uh, of uh, abstinence. I also want to just confirm that uh, in Ibusoga and Kamuli in particular, even the men are very fertile. So <laughs> that, one, that one cannot work. There's what called the no plant method, where you inject someone, I think for a period of five years, and maybe other methods. As far as this is concerned, the men have a perception that uh, after five years, someone is not sure whether the woman will, uh, will give birth again. 
what are the leaders doing about this? Secondly, what approach can we use besides the culture one? Because there are no things that cannot change as far as humanity is concerned. Okay. What approach does government have as far as training the, the men so that they also understand how important it is to have these family planning methods Thank you. put into place. Thank you, Thank Honorable you. Member. We have a lady on the podium. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker and the Honorable House. Um, Honorable Navnana Mary Lillian. We are unfortunate that uh, we only have one method maybe for men, that is the vasectomy. There are two, which, including condoms. But about condoms, that one is uh, unfortunate. Most men don't like that one. You only find a few men that are agreeing with that kind of uh, method of condom. So you find that it is only the other permanent one that men are using, which they are not uh, ready for it at times. And then for women, there are many complications that we undergo. And yet when we go to these healthy workers or units, we are not at times helped. Move closer Be to the microphone. Because I understand each method has to deal with the, a particular kind of blood or individuals. And then when we go there, they are not helping us to check maybe the blood before you can have which method to use. Then in the end, we find a lot of complications as women. That's my contribution. Thank you. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about the solutions. What can the people of Upsoka do? What can the, or how can the government help these men and women access information on contraceptives? Welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kamuli District, a district where there are very fertile men and women. <laughs> what do you say about that? What are the implications? What do you think are the implications of these large families in our homes? Yes. The implications we are facing as the community here, I think one of them is this kind of congestion in our land. Eh? That implication we are breaking our land into plots of which is causing a problem actually because when we talk of something to do with the growth as in wealth eh, you can't plan when you have a simple plot when others are having farms in square miles and indeed you can't plan that even if you decide to grow either cassava as in food security, you can't even as co uh, contain food that may take control of your family. Because like in such a plot, you can have like a, a family of 10 children and some other, you know, we are fond of having extended families here. You lose a brother who passed away in like 2000, the family comes to you. So that kind of thing you had planned for 10. So there is a lot of pressure on the limited land. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they had requested that if, if a woman is coming for continental education, they go with us men. But it was a problem in the current Uganda. Because you and can't. Not especially in Kamuli. Exactly. Mm. Because there are so many border borders here, and if you, you lock a man in the hospital for like six hours, as you know, the line is very long, eh? the man could not eh, come the next time. Eh? Mm. You see the woman with the, a pair of tablets, you don't understand. You may find the man refusing the woman to take the, the, the tablet. That what is this for? I don't understand. Mm. So So you need to go to the hospitals with your wife's corner. That remember. one is more is, is more advisable. Mm. But then the government also should either implicate it to men eh, 
that and those... it becomes a regulation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, Honorable Member. What are the implications? What are the implications yeah. in having large families? You as a young man, how many children do you plan to have? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Madam Nandutu. Yes, speak to the people. Uh, honorable members in the house, when they take the pills, you find that they even lose the sexual urge. That is very true. And no man is ready to withstand that. <laughs> yes, this is very true. You find that... Uh, is that true... My, my fellow men, do you lose the sexual They can testify that. The One, the temperature goes low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is experience, please. Yes. <laughs> the temperature goes low. You're with someone in the bed and you're not feeling as if you have somebody in the bed. But, but as, you, as, you, as you, you fear to take those contraceptives, yes. you as a man, yes. what do you think are those complications of having a large family? Do you think uh, having, losing sexual <laughs> urge is a, far more important than having fewer children? You, know, uh, you see, having a, fa a, a large family, it's also... It also depends on the, the income of the family. If Talk I have a people. lot of money, if I have enough to sustain my family, then I have no problem with having 10. But if my income... Talk cannot, to the people straight, please. If my yes. income cannot sustain a big family, then we have to use the other methods, the natural methods of withdrawal. That one is applicable and it is possible. <laughs> You want information? Are you giving him information? <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm Samuel uh, I want Speak to, support, to the people, please. I want to support my honorable on the floor. Family planning doesn't mean that you produce two or four. Produce what you can afford to hold. If I can afford to... Uh, to but do families in Kamuri producing what they can afford? I think so. <laughs> so. If I can afford 100, then I'm using family planning. That is what I wanted Thank to tell you. you. Thank However, you. Madam Honorable Nandutu, mm. uh, my only fear is that you find that uh, in some parts of the district, down there in the villages, you find younger girls getting pregnant before the, at least the age of consent. And the leaders are just silent about it. That is so, so, so scaring. And that's why maybe the population in Kamuli is almost going beyond the control. I think that's what we should focus on. The implications of having a very big family, for instance, in Kamuli, I think it is going to, to take us to having families that we are not going to afford. What do I mean? For instance, people are saying, OK, let us go on and, uh, for instance, there is a huge program, there is UPE program. So we are extending a lot of effort, a lot of pressure to the government that it has also failed to contain. What do I mean? For instance... Yes, information, Honorable. Th thank you, Madam Speaker. Introducing family planning, we are likely to cause underdevelopment in Busoga. Because, uh, uh, for example, what is important, what is important... So is you don't support contraceptives? I don't support family planning per se. Because what we need is a health population. What we need is a population that is in gainful employment, a, a population that is in businesses, other than having a low population. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. He is entitled to his opinion. Go ahead with your okay, thank you. <laughs> submission, Honorable Member. Okay, thank member. you. Uh, I'll still say that it is okay. Uh, for instance, in Uganda, we still have a few issues that the country has failed to address. I was reading on some website and, uh, which was saying the world's population is increasing by 40%. 
And by 2050, the population shall have increased by 2.5 billion. If we come to Busoga, how many men of us can be able to secure and buy some big land where we can accommodate those families? Most of us, though we are saying that we need a, a big population for a bigger business, but most of the men in Busoga, we are all staying on the land that we are give, given from our fathers. So if we cannot buy land for ourselves, we are producing a population we cannot take to school and get better quality education. I rarely hear health workers saying, okay, let us now talk to the young. Issues of family planning. The youth. The youth. Majorly they target the mature people, those ones who have already found victims of the situation. Now, what happens? These people, they say, okay, no retreat, no surrender. We have, I have already produced more than five. Why should I start controlling? Somebody will say, okay. That's what people say. <laughs> if I've failed to get wealthy, the financial part of it, mm. then how I should not fail to get, to get children at least. When we talk about family planning, we are actually talking about a voluntary decision. A voluntary decision that is taken on by a couple that is having sex on a regular basis. And it can also be taken on by an individual. Some mem a member said that we, we as health workers need to tell the, the, the person who is take, taking on a family plan planning method whether her blood is suitable for the family planning method or not. I think I need to air that out. The blood has nothing to do with the family planning method the person is going to take. Hmm? Whether we tested the blood a hundred times, it will not show us the kind of family planning that we are going to use. But we only need to do, possibly to take the weight and the blood pressure. Otherwise, the blood has nothing to do with a family okay. planning method. Thank you. Thank you for that information, Honorable Member. So what can we do as the people of Kamuli? The education is not enough. Sensitization is not enough. Yeah. Honorable Opia Sam Kalev is my name. Everybody wants family planning, but the only problem with the family planning is why people are producing more children. Is They are not very sure whether all the children will live. So if I'm very sure, like Salam Musumba here was only producing four, but she was very sure that they can come up. She stops there. But a local man, you, you produce three, and if you stopped and they all get just simple things like malaria and they will all die. Again, when you go back to produce, <laughs> you'll have become too old to produce. So I suggest if there was quality health care improvement, the people would voluntarily take on health planning because my, my children will live on, the men are not willing to spend more time there because the nurses have not yet come there and they are taking a lot of time. But if they are very sure, so do you know what they do here, right on our speaker? They hire the men because now they have put a condition that they will not attend to your wife if you are not there. So they hire Bora Bora that you become a temporal husband. You go and, and represent me. <laughs> they will end up becoming permanent husbands. And they might become one. So, improve the quality of her so care. So, you men go with your wife's hospitals because if they continue hiring border border men, it is a risk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, information on that, remember. Madam Speaker, there are even other dangers. Hmm. You know, a wife might take a husband and then the health work grabs the husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, Honourable Member. Go ahead with your contribution. <laughs> I would also suggest that the government targets the men. You have complained that the men do not come for health mm. centres. Mm. They don't come for the services. And uh, somebody told me that the reason why we go to the church is that because the church cannot come to us. <laughs> so what would you do, the health workers and government? Let them target the men and go to where they are. They are always found in the drinking place. So if they are in the drinking place, take an outreach there. Go to Nambole, begin t t telling them about family planning as they drink. They will okay. understand. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Yes, the solution is, we are now focusing on the solution is what can we do as people of Kamuli to control the child birth. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Mm. My only solution is if we parents can come together and sit and understand the meaning of family planning and then you agree jointly not the husband to dictate, neither the wife. Mm. So that from the health unit, you'll all walk away smiling that we have decided to use this 
And that will be my solution. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Yes, district leaders, Honorable Misumba, what, 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 what are you planning to do as a district? Or what have you done to ensure that at least there is childbirth control in this district to reduce the large families that we are having every day? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. We are going to put the culture of the Basoga and cultural leadership at the heart of the next family planning phase. Because culture is such a strong force that predetermines what the family will look like. Because being a patriarchal family, you know that it is the men who take charge. We name the children after the lineage of the man. And therefore the man is threatened by every family planning method in use unless they embrace it. We are going to take initiatives that are men-led, that are culture-led, that are in tandem with the community. And so we are going to put His Royal Highness, the Chabazing of Busoga, at the heart of the new initiatives that we are going to have in Kamali. And if they work successfully in Kamali, then they work successfully in Busoga. We want the clan system to take up this because we see so many problems that are arising out of unplanned parenthood, unplanned families. We want the clan system to take charge. We want the clan to be comfortable and the clan to take share of the resources of the families. The biggest problems we face as a district are disintegrating families, a disintegrating clan system. And therefore, that is all that we haven't tried. Uh, the religious leader, can you wind up as a religious leader, please? Okay. Uh, I'm talking on behalf of maybe the religious sector. What has been discussed here, there are so many ideas which have been discussed, but uh, the religious one has been not been discussed about. And yet, uh, us, the religious leaders, every time we are meeting with people and we influence their beliefs and their actions in the way they decide, their families and, and, and their lives. So I, I, one of the things that uh, I, I request uh, the health workers, the politicians, is also to enlighten us religious leaders concerning these methods of family planning. That is one. So that when we stand to tell people and to talk about families, we have the information not only the one in the Bible, but the, the scientific one. So that when we combine both these, we can help our people very positively. Because at times maybe, uh, when we look at what is in the Bible, sometimes much of it is about the cultural way. Whenever people talk about family planning, we think of producing kids. But we must redefine this word. Because family planning, as the word is, it is to plan, for the family. And most people get engaged in sex not because they are, they are planning for the family. Some of them engage in sex because of enjoyment. So now, they should educate them yes, of the yeah. number of the, okay, thank yes. you. Thank you, thank you Bishop. You have heard from the Bishop, uh, many people listen to their pastors, many people listen to their reverence, many people listen to their religious leaders and I think that is a path to take. Uh, because of time constraints we cannot con go we cannot continue with these programs. I am still Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of People's Parliament. Until next time, I adjourn this house. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.